fire we're live okay we're live over here which is funny because we're live here but i still see people over there y'all supposed to leave over there and come over here but it's funny they can't hear me so i can't say this all <laughs> this, is just, this, is, this is how it goes this is how it goes so while we're waiting for people to come back over i'm gonna um share this out to my page okay They're broadcast see I, they're still talking mandy is 13 of them on the other broadcast over there. i see right now rebecca's over here rebecca tell the people over there come over here I, i'm watching them on the other broadcast <laughs> they're still talking it's like broadcasting oh i guess that that's what happened is they couldn't hear they couldn't hear me there so they didn't hear me say go there but they're still there and they're still talking i see gown is over there talking daniel's talking Honest talking, look, hello, people. I, but it's fine. Hey, how, how are you doing? We're gonna wait for everybody to figure it out. How are you doing this morning, Mandy? I'm doing good. I'm good day today. How about you? Oh, every day is a wonderful, awesome, amazing, fantastic, spectacular day where I live anyway. Um, I don't like to complain much. I think the world is going the way it's supposed to. I think the universe is unfolding how it should. And I've been looking forward to this conversation. Me too. So, so y'all, we're going to talk about crystals this morning. We're going to talk about precious stones and crystals and crazy stuff. Crazy stuff make your pastor just flip out and go crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you know what, Mandy? I always have to kind of start off and, and talk about the religious parts of it, right? Because I, I grew up in the church. I was, I don't know why the people are still on the other, I'm still seeing them over there, still talking. It's funny. I have all these monitors in front of me. I'm like watching people. They're still, the funny part is I see people who are here in the current conversation and they're still in the other conversation. So maybe I should, I should, we should, we should just belabor the point. No, no, they're 15 here. We're going to get started. We're going to get started. So I like, I like to address the, the, the Christianity perspective first, because a lot of my viewers are Christian and uh, probably most people in our country are Christian. And so the first question everybody asks is, can I do this? Is this pagan? Am I going to go to hell if I do this? Right. And so I just want to clarify to everybody, everybody, there's scriptures that, and it's not just Christianity, there are other religions that talk about crystals and precious stones. But the most important part the absolute most important part, if you think it's satanic to use crystals and, and precious stones, is to understand that you are watching me right now on crystals and precious stones. <laughs> you need to realize all small electronics all use crystals and precious stones. Otherwise, none. our whole society, everything is based in crystals and precious stones. So we're either we're all demons and we're all going to hell, or we just don't really understand as much as we thought we did. So anyway, I wanted to kind of clarify that. So, you know, I, I still, I, but I believe some weird things, Mandy. I believe, well, not weird. I just, I don't think, I think religion trips us up more than anything. I think that anytime we follow something blindly, we get in trouble and we should always question everything. Uh, so anyway, everybody, this is Mandy Metzger. She is my crystal and precious stone person. Today, we want to kind of talk about cultures and the use of crystals going back every continent going back to the beginning of time in all religions introduce yourself mandy tell us about yourself yeah hi everyone i am the owner and what i like to say light worker of inner light botanicals it's a skincare and lifestyle brand and i incorporate crystals in that skincare brand in the skincare products and um, I am in a crystal healing course currently, and we haven't went over the history, but I've been doing some research on that. And it's really interesting about how really every ancient civilization since the beginning of time has used crystals in some way. So we'd like to talk a little bit more about that and then bring it to a modern day. Um, and, you know, we're using crystals every day. And a lot of you might not even know that. So just wanted to talk about that a little bit as well. Every day in all of our technology, from our cell phone transmission, the CB transmissions to this transmission, all of our small electronics, all the cars you drive, everything has crystals. Now the question is, are you using them to get somewhere? Are you using them to talk to someone? 
or are using them to heal. Like there are a lot of different reasons, right? And I mean, even the pyramid. The pyramid is made of quartz crystal. And uh, reading the, 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 the emerald tablets, I was looking at um, the fact that the, the, the top of the pyramid, which is no longer there, was a massive crystal. I mean, we use them for, for, for consolidating and, and, what is it, enhancing energy, right? Like that's the whole purpose from a modern technological perspective is you're taking energy, not necessarily power, because I think this is where a lot of people get confused. They think it's for power, say, oh, well, the pyramid's for power generation. Let's be clear. What we know is the pyramid, because it's a crystal, it consolidates energy and puts it somewhere. Right. You can right. use that to power electronics or you can use it to do various other things. Is that, is that close to being correct? Does that sound good, Mandy? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it is a form of energy healing and energy. That's the thing. Like everything, we are energy. So um, it's about the energy that the crystals emit and working with um, maybe some physical things in the body, mental things. Typically, if you're not feeling good, you're feeling that you're on a low um vibration frequency um and then just working with the crystals to help bring that up again whether mentally physically um it is all of an energy healing right and energy and i and i think something you said there is important too that people need to think about is everything is energy everything e equals mc squared all matter you are energy your laptop is energy. It uses crystals that are energy. The pyramids are energy. The dirt, the soil, the rocks, everything is energy. And if those things are what? If it's if, if they're out of balance, if the wave, the, the wave energy isn't in tune with the way it should be, then you're going to have a condition of dis-ease in the wavelengths or disease in your body. So I think that's why I think it's a very interesting, interesting discussion. And you'll be out of balance and whatever it is will be out of balance in the same way the first broadcast was out of balance <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> so what are some of the, the the ancient cultures that use crystals so the ancient egyptians queen cleopatra used malachite which i have right oh my here God, malachite. what's it called yeah. malachite malachite yeah, yeah. Malachite. a lovely Malachite green color um and lapis lazuli lapis. yeah you like that one i'm sorry i, I get excited that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a crazy crystal back that to is. the ancient egyptians yeah and they used that for enlightenment and awareness um specifically female royalty it was it was big with um they also used the crystals for the lovely eyeshadow and cosmetics so uh it yeah. goes yeah, they buried um, the dead with crystals as well, specifically quartz um, as a way into the afterlife so they could find their way into the afterlife. Um, can, I, can, I tell you, can I tell you my lapis story? Yeah. I've been waiting to tell this story for a minute. It's <laughs> I've been waiting about. Listen, this is how I got excited about crystals. Outside of the fact I'm an old IT guy, right? And I believe in... You know, technology, we don't do things that don't work. We're greedy, right? If it doesn't work, we don't do it. And so we've been using crystals and we use them for not just for the old uh, CB radios we used to use a lot, but also for laptops and hard drives now in terms of storing uh, data and information. But this is my crazy story. This is my lapis, right? Lapis, lapis. Oh, lapis, you lapis. brought it. That's my lapis. Oh, I always have these. I have this one. I have another one. I have no idea what it is. I think it's called a rose quartz or something like that. I have one of rose quartz. But let me tell you my lapis story. It's crazy, right? So I got the lapis Lelouzi. I keep calling her Lapaluzi. That's my, I call it Lapaluzi. That's my name for her. She's a her. She's not a him. She's a her crystal. And what was really interesting is I first got it. I had no idea what I was doing. I haven't dreamed for the most part in years. It's probably been 10 years since I had any regular dreams. I had this thing by my bed. And it was after the first week I realized just having this thing close to me, I was dreaming every night I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't remember all the dreams, but I would wake up in the morning, you know how you wake up in the morning and you know that you had a dream, you can't remember what it is. And it was crazy and weird to me. 
Um, so I mentioned it. I went to all my crystal friends on online, like, what am I supposed to do? What does this mean? What's going on? You know, and they were just like, oh, that's normal. That happens, blah, 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 blah. And then it disappeared. I lost it. I lost it. And I couldn't find Lapis for about two weeks. And about a week ago, it reappeared in the center of my bed. It was smack dab in the center and there was no freaking way that thing should have been there. And I'm not saying it could have been me and I was crazy or something, had it in my jacket pocket and I was flipping it around my jacket, putting it on in the morning. I kind of dance when I get dressed and ready for the, to go and work at work. And maybe it fell out and flew and landed on the bed. Anything is possible. But someone else said, they said that the fairies steal it. That was kind of, kind of freaky to me. I kind of opened my eyes to these things like nowadays, I'm realizing that we don't know as much as we think we know. We're all we're we're a, we're a very hubris species. Like if we if we can't explain it, then it doesn't actually exist. And um, but that was my crazy lapis story. It disappeared. It reappeared. The thing makes me dream. So I don't know what kind of energy is in the lapis. I don't know if you encode them or this one's encoded. I don't know if I'm just tapping into it because of the type of energy it is. But there's no question that it increased the amount of dreams that I have. And that's the thing too, you can use crystals intuitively if you hold it in your receptive hands. So I'm right-handed, so that's your, that would be my left hand. And you, you can meditate that with them for even five minutes and just feel into that energy and let them speak to you and um, work with them in your own way. So that's, so the other thing I was thinking, because it all, it all fascinates me, right? Like it fascinates me. How did the ancients know these things? How did people, because they all wore grass skirts, they were just dumb and pagans. They had clubs and sticks and they beat everybody and they cut everybody open, sacrificed everything. That's what history tells you, that they're, they're just nutty people. But I look at things like sage as a good example, right? Sage. We know now what sage does in the human brain, that it opens up thought and that it, it, it cr increases cellular activity. It does so many things that allow us to think better. Our cells become more oxygenated. And I sit back and I think about, you know, the billions of plants on this planet. How in the world did anyone realize if you burn sage that it actually will increase your thought for meditation or, or before ceremonies? And so they were a lot smarter than we think. You know, we know now that the picture I had on the first broadcast that failed was uh, the massive crystals in the center of the earth. We know the earth actually is pretty much one big crystal and it's got tons of 80 foot, 300 foot massive crystals within it. And so if crystal like everything is energy and it consolidates and focuses that energy and the earth is one big crystal, there is a lot to that. There's a lot happening there that could make sense. I don't know if my lapis is channeling something from the center of the earth, from the hollow people, because the earth is hollow, they say, and flat earth or whatever, something, somebody lived down there send, sending dreams to me. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. The only thing I know is I don't know anything, but I find crystals and precious stones extremely fascinating. So the Silicon Valley. So anyway, we got off on lapis. What else you got for us? Um... The Romans used crystals in armor and shields as a protection for protection and strength in battle. Um, ancient Greeks, they crushed hematite, which I have that one. Hematite. This one is very, it's very heavy and dense. Um, a very good grounding stone. Um, but they crushed hematite and rubbed it on the sh soldiers' bodies. Um, and that's supposed to help bring good health, fortune, um, good outcomes in battle. That's what they thought. Um, India, any of you know about Ayurveda, Ayurvedic medicine? Um, you can use crystals to help balance uh, physical, emotional, metaphysical imbalances in the, within the body. Uh, Chinese culture, they're very big on jade. Lovely stone. What is that, jade? Yeah, that's jade. jade. Yeah, they, it comes in all different colors of like, green. This is a nice light colored green. Um, and and certain the, cultures prefer certain ones, right? Because lapis yeah, is a big... Mm -hmm. 
it seems like different cultures used different um, different crystals. So, um, like the Chinese culture, thought jade is a stone of wisdom, and that was also used for centuries for health, wealth, longevity. So, um, and then modern day, like you like you were saying, we we have crystals, LCD, like the LCD screens, liquid crystal <laughs> display. <laughs> well, we, we do use that even here in modern day, your iPhones, your, your computers, um, things are powered by a silicon processor chip and silicon is an element derived from silicate minerals, which is AKA quartz. So um, quartz watches. So we're all pagans, we're all pagans, we're all pagans. That's why I, I laugh at it. To me, it's funny, <laughs> it's like the PA system at the church the, the cell phone your pastor uses, the car he drives or she drives, everything, their watch, their screen, everything, everything. We're all pagans. We're all e either we're misinterpreting what some of the scriptures say or we're all or we're all pagans. And by the way, Jacob, you know what you know what Jacob said? Ja Jacob in the Bible. Ja Jacob, I, I love I'm a Christian to you. I love y'all. I do. Let's just we got but we got to be truthful about things. Jacob said, I've seen the face of God. Where I've gone to the place of God, and I call it pineal. And crystals interface with the pineal gland in some ways. No, uh oh, did we lose you? Can you hear me? What was that? What was that? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, okay, I can hear you. I was having fun. I'm sorry. Let's get. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So Jay and and the the the, the Eastern culture. Right. And then I'm wondering, too, how you said that it seems like so certain cultures d used certain stones. Um, and then I'm wondering if that's because of like what was local to those cultures. I have I, I haven't done research on that, but I, to me, like, that makes sense. But no, I mean, you, you tie it into religion. And I, I feel like it's not really a about religion. I feel like it's more about like when I first got into crystals, um, you know, I, I would read about them and what they're supposed to do for you. And for me, it was more about the pop, like maybe a like positive affirmation. Like I would sit jets around, um, because I associated it with happiness. It's like a light, very light, fluffy crystal. And it was more about the mental association, like a positive affirmation where I would look at it and think about happiness because, um, like that's what it, it meant. So, um, and then into back into the energy part of it. So I feel like, um, you know, I, I got into my crystal course being a little bit hesitant about it, but the more and more I learn and how it connects, how you can work with them and how you can into it, it's a way for me to help tap into my intuition as well. Um, and be guided. It, it's a spiritual practice. It's a, it can be a ritual or in a, a practice, something that you can make part of your everyday life. Mm. I, I like how you put that. I mean, and, and, and the way that I think about it is crystals and precious stones, they're just a resource, right? Mm -hmm. Like oil or anything else, gasoline, like it's a resource. It's like fruits and vegetables, food and minerals. And, you know, there are different uses for it. You're either using it or you're not using it. And so, right. So it's not religious and never has been. I think that it scares it scares certain people in religions because they can't do mystical things because they're not really in touch with the things they say they're in touch with. And it scares them. It's just technology, right? It's just resource and technology and others can do it and they can't do it. Then they're, they're a lesser God or their God isn't as strong. That's why I don't really get in those debates. To me, it's just, it's a tool. You're either using it for something good or you're using it for something bad. Right. Um, you know, so and then the other thing, someone asked if we're going to do questions. And so that's up to you. We can do questions after we kind of get through the data. Um, so so that's up to you how much time you have. I'd be open to questions. OK, OK, yeah. I, I'll watch for questions, but I know you have some content. Let's get through the content first and then we can do questions after. Uh oh, did you freeze up? Uh oh, did you freeze it? I think I think she froze up. I think Mandy froze up. 
Manny! Manny, you froze. Yep, she's froze. She's frozen, not moving, not moving at all, not moving. Maybe it's just bandwidth. So we will do questions. Um, yeah, uh, Brother Gellin, listen to all the different Vermont. And that's what I think. I, that's what I think, Gellin. I think that Vermont, you know, you're talking about the different types of crystals that they have. I think it's just a resource, right? Like if you if you're living in a certain area and this is one of the prolific resources in that area, then that just tends to be the one you use a lot. Hey, Mandy's back. Mandy's back. Mandy! All right. All right. Gellin's going to tell me I'm drinking too much coffee now, so I'm going to calm down. So what we were talking, uh-oh, she popped in and she popped back out. So I think that's what it is. I think if you're just from that area and it has that type of crystal, then they learned how to use that and probably what that was for most, which is really cool because as we evolve, then it makes, oh, uh, is Mandy back? Mandy, I'm Mandy. back, yeah. Okay. All right, so listen, this is where we were. Gallon and I, we were off in a side discussion. And hey, yeah, he, made, he made a great point. He was just saying that Vermont's full of a lot of different types of crystals, right? And so because a certain area probably had a lot, that's what they use. Like if you had stone, I mean, if you had gold or metal or bronze or whatever you had, silver, your cultures, those cultures probably tended to use that more. And so it makes sense that they would learn what this is used best for. Yeah. Uh, from a, yeah, from a biological technological perspective or from a any sort of other technological perspective in Italy, they found the swords that were made out of crystals. And so they figured they could stab people better with the crystals. So, you know, so I, in, I think in arrowheads, so that kind of makes sense, which is why to me, this is fascinating because we live in a fascinating time where we can look at all of what all these cultures and religions all use the different crystals for, and we can improve our lives um, the same way they're improving solar panels and sensor technology through what they just discovered out about the pyramid, which was not a tomb and was not built by any of the pharaohs they said it was. But that's that's another discussion. Okay, so you're back. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it just, I mean, just to wrap that up, between ancient Egyptians, Romans, ancient Greeks, India, Chinese culture, um, and then here in the modern day, we're using them as well. So between healings, offerings, protective talismans, all lots of good things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so you were you were talking about the, the different crystals used in high technology. Are you there, Ken? Oh, you can't hear me. No, I can't hear me. Oh, I can hear me. Breaking up a little bit. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can y'all in the room hear me? Breaking up a little bit. Are you on Wi-Fi or are you on cell? I'm on Wi-Fi. Okay. I hear you now. <laughs> you can hear me now. That's a commercial. You can hear me now. Okay, cool. Yeah. So tell me more. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, people. I'm here. I'm on coffee. I'm on way too much coffee. Can you hear me? No, can't hear me. Are you there? Can yes, you hear we. Me? Okay, everybody. Yes, everybody can hear you. I can hear you. I, I think your connection might be a little slow. They say they can hear you. Okay. You're Are on. There? Yes. All right, I'm going to do a refresh of the browser. Did a refresh of the page. By the way, I'm just let y'all know this. Be live gets a little choppy sometimes. If you're ever like watching a broadcast and you start, people start having trouble hearing each other, just tell them refresh the page if you re refresh your browser that usually fixes it see mandy I, I almost almost refixed i'm don't make fake news on me i'm just saying i've been using this for a little while anytime broadcasts have problems on be live just tell them refresh the browser so i just refresh mine and let's see if we can get her back in a minute everyone is heard and she's off we're here 
Yep, chop choppy. Is it still choppy, Indy? Is it choppy? I'm talking now. Don't make me sing. Don't make me sing. Gail, I'm gonna start talking about me if I start singing. I don't want to start singing. Can you hear me? Is it clear now? Or just stop typing, people. No, don't stop typing. Y'all type away. Ask your questions, make your statements. Like this is how this thing works. It's got to be live, right? When you're actually engaged, then it becomes really interesting. Say what you know. What are your experiences with crystals? And if I'm wrong and you think that your religion feels that crystals are horrible and we're all going to go to hell because <laughs> we because we use gold and silver in, inside of our uh, our laptops and circuit boards for everything. I mean, we could be Amish if we wanted to. Uh, I seem smooth. Thank you, Deborah. I'm not smooth. I'm actually really clumsy. I trip and fall everywhere I go. <laughs> I probably got to work with crystals more. Now I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think I probably have a good connection. I think she's having some trouble with her her Wi-Fi, but let me see. Let me see if I can send her a message and tell her just log back in. See, look at this. I'm gonna use my crystals right now. I'm gonna talk and sue a message. Just log back in and refresh your browser. Boom, sent it. Look at that, satanic. Y'all see the demon? I'm demon. I'm <laughs> I like talking into the phone. It's so much easier. All right, let me see. Yes, we hear you both. No, G man, you're clear. She seems she's just lagging behind a bit. I actually don't even see her. Can y'all see her? I have a ring that has hematite stone, love opals. Um, when the Christian church bans the use of crystals, it's a sign that they work. Oh, Susan, start dropping the truth bombs. All right, I don't see her. I assume that she is here and I can't see her. So I am going to refresh the page again. And maybe. Back and I don't see that she's come back yet again. No, she's not on. Nope, 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 nope. Everybody says nope. Okay, we'll keep going. She's going to try to come back in. Um, Mandy reappear. Laura, you got to say that to your crystal girl. You're not using your crystals, girl. You're not paying attention. Laura, you're supposed to use your crystals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah speaking to your crystal, like, ah, come back in, Mandy. You know, you got to focus the energy. You got to like say it through or something like that. I don't know. I'm fascinated by this. I don't know about y'all. I, this, there's so much we don't know. There's so much we don't know. And it drives me insane that all of this has been hidden from us. So hopefully she'll come back in here soon. But in the meantime, we'll run through comments. Um, no, she is Russian Wi-Fi mailed it, Susan. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't think Russia is trying to shut down the crystal conversation, but uh, maybe so. Maybe so. So, you know what I was looking at? Let me tell you this while we're waiting for her to come back in. So I was looking at both. Like I, I'm, I'm into this whole emerald, um, the emerald uh, tablets. Right. And the thing that he said is, he said, I built the pyramids. He didn't say it that way. He probably said, me, ha, me, 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 ha, something like that. But he basically said the translation was something about building the pyramids. And he put a crystal on the top of the pyramids to pull power out of the ether. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea. I love it. It's delicious and it's interesting and I want to study it more. But someone was mentioning that yesterday. Somebody was talking about the ether. And I think that gets back into um, Nikola Tesla, where uh, he was talking about, you know, he built a tower and he was pulling power out of the atmosphere and providing free energy. And this is what I'm saying is there's a difference between power and energy. You know, we shouldn't get it confused, right? Power is a type of energy. It's a usage of energy, but energy, energy is just energy. Your whole body runs on energy. All right, let me see. She keeps trying to come back in and she keeps saying that she keeps losing it if you're on your cell phone try without wi-fi so what you gotta do is you gotta trick the deep state sometimes it gets you on your isp because that whole net neutrality thing so you flip your isp to a different isp might take a few minutes to catch up because they didn't want us talking about crystals <laughs> they don't want us talking about some rocks i love rocks i was a rock somebody Lori was saying that um New York kids, kids like collecting rocks. I love collecting rocks. When I was a kid, we used to always collect rocks. And I find looking at the colors of them interesting. Another theory I have, it might be that certain crystals 
because of their makeup, because they are energy, are quantumly entangled with other planets that have a lot of that crystal in their core also, because they were formed in a part of the universe where that particular mineral that makes that crystal, because crystals grow themselves, yes. Crystals are alive. You don't believe me? Look at crystals growing. Crystals actually grow. You can find videos online. I was looking at an old 1950 video. The guy was growing crystals. And so it might be that that particular crystal, and I think this is a rose quartz. So this rose quartz is operating on a frequency that 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 Alpha Centauri 9 is because it's made out of that. And that the closer I am to this, the more it's communicating, right? It's on that frequency. And this is how CB radios and Radio wave technology works, but that's why it's interesting and fascinating to me. All right, let me see what you're talking about. Um, what is it about the Himalayan crystal lamps? What do they do? That's and that is a good question. I have no idea, Yvonne. I have no idea, girl. I don't give me line. <laughs> don't give me line. I don't know, but they do. I know somebody here knows the answer to that. I know that. Um, well, salt is a crystal it's a crystalline form right made out of hydrogen all right mandy's rebooting her laptop so that could have been it the deep state was in her laptop so i'm not sure i know that they have the electric light lamp underneath those those um himalayan sea salt things but to be honest with you some of them are fake gotta be careful ivan <laughs> some of them are plastic now but they're not isn't that crazy that's kind of crazy how we take a thing that actually meant something long ago and we actually make it commercial we commercialize it we make it plastic and it's fake and phony and actually doesn't do anything but it looks pretty right but these crystals they had purpose like i was looking at there's a um there is a a temple in india that they call it the crystal skull temple right and if you're familiar with the crystal skulls and and i don't know who wrote that the theory, but there were 13 crystal skulls, and I think they found seven of them, or they found 12 of them, something like that, all around the planet, and that in those crystals, they were quartz, and they hid the data about the history of the human race being brought or being created on this planet, something like that, but there's a, um, there's a temple in India, I'll post the link later, where it actually, it's called the crystal skull temple, and it has a light, like the roof is set up. It's an underground temple and the roof is set up so the light comes in Indiana Jones style. So it just hits the crystal skull at the right point where it would shine. But I think there's a piece of glass there now instead of the actual crystal skull because somebody took it, Indiana Jones showed up and took it. But you know what, it's, it's interesting. So I think Himalayan sea salt and light and all of that have something to do with it. Could be the um, light coming from a sun and what it does inside the crystals, how it changes the energy. I don't know, all very interesting, um, but definitely not plastic. Is it? <laughs> so answer the question, Ivana, if you have a plastic Himalayan sea salt lamp, it's, just, it's pretty, it's pretty, you can put some plants around it, you know, but is it gonna do anything in terms of energy? I'd say no, but probably on top of that, if it weren't true solar spectrum, right? Because there's no light that's made that actually mimics solar spectrum. So if you're really getting something because it's coming from the sun through crystals or Himalayan sea salt or whatever it is, you're not really, you're probably not going to get it from a light because the best grow lights now, even the most expensive $500 grow bulbs, they only mimic the solar spectrum by like 60%. So um, to answer that question, I would say that, no, I, I think as, as much as possible, whatever we do, it's got to be authentic. Like if you hear about this was used for that or this was that, blah, 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 blah. You know, you want to make sure it's authentic and it's not commercialized. We are great at commercializing crap. Um, let me see. Was it? Yeah, didn't actually like that thing. Not that I know too much about negative ions. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about it. Like the, even the bracelets, like they have the... Um, crystal bracelets and the precious stone bracelets and that that's supposed to do something in terms of negative ions in your bloodstream and how, you know, most of you know, a lot of uh, a lot of iron, a lot of metals flow through your blood. And so it has something to do. To me, it's all interesting. It's interesting. Um, I don't know. Let me see. There's Himalayan salt. Look at my Himalayan salt crusher right now. And then we eat it, too. Right. Because what is all of this stuff anyway? What are minerals? They're asteroid dust. 
right? We are asteroid dust. Everything is made up of asteroid dust. We're asteroid dust collectors. We eat asteroid dust. There's asteroid dust in water. Um, let me see if, if I can get her back. There's asteroid dust in water. And so we are asteroid dust collectors the entire time. She's coming back. Yay! Sorry about that. <laughs> I was making stuff up. I was here just lying, man. I was like, oh, yeah, well, I got cookies. Been using them for thousands of years. I, You know, what you do is you take the Himalayan sea salt, put it with the quartz, and I've been making stuff up. I just been having yeah. fun. Welcome back. Thanks. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. So maybe that was it. You just needed to reboot? Yeah, I just rebooted. So. You sound crystal clear to me. Good. Yay. And I can hear you. So it's good. Okay. So we were talking about, are, plastic, we yeah, were talking about, about plastic Himalayan sea salt lamps. Do you know, <laughs> we're pretty sure the, pla the plastic Himalayan sea salt lamps don't do anything, but do you know anything about the Himalayan sea salt lamps? Like, is that trying to mimic? I thought it was trying to mimic the whole crystal skull in the temple and the crystal in the temple, and they would use solar light that came in at, at certain times of the equinox, solar progression, whatever. <laughs> It makes makes the crystal thing go shiny thing and the shiny energy thing. But I don't know if you know anything about like shining light in the crystals outside of making lasers. So the Himalayan salt lamps, I think, are based on the salt and the ions and trying and um, just kind of purifying the air around you to make you feel better and more at ease. I think the glow is just amazing to the, the glow. So the glow is OK. Yeah. It does something to the but environment. Plastic, you know? plastic ones? I haven't I haven't seen plastic ones. Yeah, I've seen the plastic ones. I've seen yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Like that's the thing with with crystals too. There are fake crystals out there as well. Oh. It's a big industry. So especially um they say jade, for example. If you see those jade facial rollers, they're awesome, by the way, if you if you can get your hands on one. It's supposed to help reduce inflammation, um, help the circulation in the face. Um, but if it one thing with jade, which is this one again, um, it should be cold to touch. So if it's cold, they, they are making jade rollers with plastic um, as as well, not with actual jade. So. Um, yeah, so be careful of those. And there's a there's a question I have, I, and I don't know. Maybe this is standard geology or its density or something. How come my lapis lazuli and and my rose quartz, when I first touch them, they're like freezing, like it in the house. They're not room temperature. Why in the world would a crystal uh, or precious stone be freezing cold? And it seems like when I'm holding it, if I'm meditating or I'm doing something. Sometimes I'll go to sleep and I have it in a hand. I'll wake up. It seems like it's hotter than I am or room temperature. Like, is there anything? To, is that just density in geology? Am I just making that up in my head? That actually, I think you talked to me about that before. I'm not sure why that would be. It's kind of like the jade roller. You know, jade is cooler to touch. So something to mm -hmm. look into a little bit further. Yeah. Yeah, I talk to everybody about everything. I don't, people think, they think I'm lying sometimes. I'll say, I, I, was, I was in a conversation today, yesterday, Sunday. It's like, he doesn't talk to people that much. I talk to everybody. I'm trying to figure out as much as I can figure out in this world that we don't know anything. So what else you got for us? Uh, the only other one I was going to talk about was um, the Japanese culture and how they also use... Um, they were more into the scrying and the crystal ball and the crystal quartz spheres specifically. So quartz seems to be one that's used very commonly used throughout different cultures and up to modern day. Um, but the crystal quartz spheres represented the heart of a dragon, which signified power and um, wisdom. So. Hmm. You know, the other thing I think about, so maybe quartz was pretty yeah. prolific around the world. That's not crystal, Mandy. That's a cat. That's that a cat. was a Hard cat tail. That. that was not crystal. That was a cat tail. You're trying to fool me. No, I know that. So um, I think about like scepters, right? Like how the Pope has scepters and, you know, swords from medieval times. They would put crystals on the base of the uh, of the of the hilt of the, you know, and they and Moses 
and the staff and you know he'd walk and put the staff down and part the seas then i wonder i like i really wonder about charging someone asked a question a minute ago about charging can you actually charge crystals people say you put it outside in the wind and the rain and the sun um to charge them and the crystals take in a charge and release it back to you but then can a is it, if it's like a battery can it take a charge out of me what do you know about charging so charging, that's actually a really good point. You are supposed to be charging your crystals, clearing them and charging them um, before you use them. So the idea behind like charging, you can just put out in the, like full moonlight, uh, for the moonlight from a full moon. Um, and th there's different ways that could be a whole nother conversation. Um, but also just clearing them is another thing too. Before you use them, you should be clearing them. Um, and the idea behind that is that the, the crystals take on energy from where they've been. So from, you know, if you buy it in a shop, other people may have put their hands on it and feel it and touch it and it's taken on their energy. So it's good to clear and, and charge them. It's kind of like vaccination or something. That's kind of nasty. It's like, so you need like an antibacterial. You don't, you don't like want other red. people's energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, bad, bad energy, good energy is different. Yeah, so. you don't want the bad bacteria. You don't want the E. coli. Somebody put E. coli on your crystal. You don't want that from the store. So you got to clear the crystal first. Okay. That, but you might luck up, you know, a wizard, a witch, or somebody might have came through and got some power in it. Could that, you know, could be, but you probably want to wash the crystal too because you don't want to vaccinate your immune system it might take you out that makes sense yeah. clearing it so now do you do like you ener charge energetically mm -hmm. clearing it uh, you can run some things under some crystals under like water water but some crystals like selenite here's a selenite wand um this yes. i love i love working with selenite it actually has helped me if you by holding it in my receptive hand it's helped me um get rid of a headache so and tension too, if you place it on areas of tension, it's helped me um, get rid of that tension, lessen the stress, so. Oh, they're asking about soil. They're saying, can you can you charge them in soil? That is one of the ways, yeah, or like buy a plant. Buy a plant or put in, so yeah, but but and someone said something about taint, uh, tainting it, and, and it probably has to be, what about chemicals? Like if the, if the soil's got, I don't know, let's say you live in a country called America and they put glyphosate and all the daggone soil and poison everybody, you know, does chemicals affect the crystal? Um, and my other question would be, I guess, because soil mostly is asteroid dust anyway, that, that soil could charge the crystal, right? It's just taking energy from the other minerals, asteroid dust in the soil to charge the crystal. Yeah. I mean, as for, I mean, my way of looking at it is if you can or, organic soil, you know, it, organic yes. <laughs> you're all into that but yeah i mean treat the crystals as if you know you're it's the food that you're putting into your body so the the more pure the more good the more organic that you um that you work with the crystals you know it's all about that that energy so good energy comes back all about that energy so it's kind of like grounding in a way it's kind of like uh, putting your feet in the dirt. And when I'm in the garden, sometimes I like to put my feet in the soil, move my toes around in the soil, and the worms crawl through it. The microbiology makes me feel good, and I'm grounded. So, I, so maybe that's is that a way of like grounding the crystal? I guess by taking the crystal and putting it in fresh, clean soil. Maybe at the beach. How about water? Does water charge crystals? You can you can run it under water. Not um, tap water though, right? Or I mean, chlorinated. I, I have. Right. All right, so I think we're down into in, into question land. I see lots of questions coming in. I can't yeah, keep I up see with questions them. too. Um, hold on. So I don't know. Maybe I'll go down and see. You guys can ask your questions. I'll see if I miss them. I know that they were going down pretty fast. So can you clear? Can you clear the crystal? Can you so can you clear it in the so soil and not discharge it? I missed that one, Ken. Can you repeat that? Uh, I think if someone asked, can you clear the crystal in the soil, not just charge it? That I have to look into. 
It's okay. a good question. All right. Jeannie said full moon. I, I, mean, I cleanse it with cool boiled water in a bowl and set it under the moonlight, but keep it out of the sun rays if you can. Is there something bad about sun rays? Well, just think about some, you know, some things can be altered by direct sunlight. Mm. So. So I, are there certain crystals that do better in the sun and others in the moon? That I, I would have to do some more research on. Okay. And Deborah asked, what makes, what's, uh, what makes something a crystal versus a rock? Is it minerals or how they're formed? Well, mm. Can I pretend to answer that one? Go for it. I don't pretend to answer. I think I think I think, but actually, I think I know, Deborah. I think I kind of know. Crystals actually grow themselves, right? When you put a crystal in the right um, formula, it actually grows, and that's why you have crystals that are eighty feet tall, three hundred feet tall under the earth because they actually grow in the right environments. I don't think rocks grow. I think rocks are made by pressure and heat, and they're minerals, so they're all made of the same things. But crystals have particular forms, and so. Like if you ever, I, I'll post a video about growing crystals, but every crystal has a very specific pattern and form at, at the microscopic level. And so they grow. And so I think crystal has a crystalline structure. Rock is like just a rock. <laughs> it's just minerals by pressure and heat that are formed together. Form like That's what I think. I'm no geologist. That's what I think based on what I know. All right, geo. Oh, <laughs> Rebecca said a geode is just a rock until it's split open. But yeah, but it's got crystals on the inside. It's a hollow rock. Well, it was it. It's crystals that formed on the inside of a hollow rock or something like that. I'm really saying a crystal is a rock, but a special kind. Now we, I know that uh, I can't keep up with all the questions. There are a bunch of them. The thing is, we'll do this again. This is not just a one-time thing. I want to know more and more. I mean, um, I mean, you're taking a whole crystal course, right? Like, it's not like you're, you know, you're not like most of us who just go to YouTube University and go down a rabbit hole. Like, oh my God, we don't know nothing. It's crazy. I don't want to, you know, the aliens and everything. But you're actually <laughs> taking a full course. So you can take I am. Yeah, it's a six-month crystal healer course. So learning how to use crystal. Uh-oh. 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 She's gone again. She's gone again. She's gone again. She looks frozen on my screen. I don't know if you guys can hear her. <laughs> Ellen said, a rock is a politician. Yeah, that, yeah, that's about right. That's about right. You just take all the dumbness, the minerals, and like there's nothing methodical. There's nothing crystalline. There's nothing pretty about it. You just take a bunch of heat and pressure, <laughs> push it together, and it just forms this big block-headed thing. <laughs> all right, Ellen, that's just, oh, that's just wrong. But you're right. I think you're right. Um, while grounding in a dry, conductive soil. Yes, yeah, so I, th I think that's what grounding is kind of like. I think grounding and clearing your crystals, I think it's kind of the same thing. I think the, the same basic philosophical belief would work with that, right? Because if we're energy, the ground is energy, everything in the ground is energy, the crystal is energy, everything in the crystal and the ground is energy, then we're re-energizing. And that's why I think people feel good when they walk at the beach in your sand. You know, well, there's that, and plus you're breathing in the Himalayan sea salt. Like all of this stuff is 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 on point. You know, we just we live in a world that doesn't focus on these things. We live in a world where we use technology to answer all the important questions. And the ancients just weren't as dumb as people think they are. They were highly evolved. Hey, Maddie's back. I'm back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so um, Anna already said we need another show with you. So as you okay, do great. more and more with your coursework, we want to know more and more. And I'll have more and more crystal stories of what happens with them. That sounds great. And but check I, my blog, too. I'm going to be blogging more about crystals on inter, innerlightbotanicals.com. 
So you okay. Can and can you post? There. Can you come back and post the link in the comments so everybody can get to that? Yes, I can. All right, that is awesome. Awesome. Somebody asked me what my birthstone is. I have no idea. I don't. What does that even mean? What is that, Mandy? What is birthstone? What's all that about? With your date of birth. Okay. So based on when your date of birth was, that determines what your birthstone is. But why? Is there some significance to that, you think? That could be a whole nother long. A whole nother? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not even worth getting into the rabbit that, hole. That's okay. the thing. Everything just branches off and branches off and branches off. So, mm. yeah. That's deep. Yeah, that is you can get deep. <laughs> deep. And my Maha wants me to say my birthday. Can I say that without witches like knowing something to me on my birthday or something? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that. Does that mean anything? I gotta be careful. I it, you I believe. Listen, I believe in spirits and ghosts and sorcery and witches and good and bad and evil. I believe in all of it. I think I'm somehow weirdly protected because none of that's ever come after me. But I believe in all of that. So I think that I have to be careful or we have to be careful in what we let people know about us. Is, that, is it safe to say my birthday? Uh-oh, we lost her again. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, you're back. Okay. Okay. That's <laughs> okay. So, so um, did you hear what I said? I did not. Okay. Okay. No, I was just talking about birthdays and like, I, I believe in spirits and ghosts and dimensions and stuff. I don't think they are what we think they are. You like the gods. I think there's probably one big G God or it's a whole bunch of big G gods, but only one came here, but we have a whole bunch of little G gods and they like to pretend that they were gods. But I think there's just so much we don't know about the multiple dimensions and all mm -hmm. the different planets and all the life that's out there. I think there's so little we know, but um, I think I think like demonic possessions, I think all of that's probably real. You know, you look at the Vatican and they have they put in a new course. I think it was two years ago because there's so many demonic uh, um, possessions happening now. They didn't have enough exorcists going around to do it. I think some of it might be just nutty stuff. Uh, some of it might be real. I don't know. So I'm a little I'm a little touchy when it comes to like, you know, telling people your birthday. You're on my probably on my Facebook, you probably know my birthday anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Probably doesn't matter. I just don't want nobody doing no mojo to me, no black magic and nothing on my birthday. <laughs> um, we don't want that. <laughs> the magic. Oh, Maha, that's a good point. Magic is neutral. It's just intent. And that's what I love. I love I love what you're saying, Maha. And I, you know what? I want to know more about the Native Americans and crystals, too. But magic, I think there is no magic. I think I think like like that's one of the ways that, that religion attacks paganism or things they don't understand we always attack things we don't understand but in time everything that seems supernatural it ends up just being technology but you know being able to fly a fax machine a car you know modern medicine some of it <laughs> not all of it cellular phones and technology like all of this stuff seems supernatural and it's just technology so i agree with that i, I think Magic is just some form of technology we haven't re-figured out again yet. It's just a tool and it's all about intent. It, there can be negative intent and there can be positive intent. And I think mm -hmm. the other weird thing I'm going to say is that's why I think you got to put positive energy out. I think you got to love everybody. I think you got to be yeah. kind to everybody. I think you really have to be a, a peaceful soul on this planet. And I think when you put that out, I think mm -hmm. that that's what comes back to you. But I think when you put out a lot of negativity, you put out a lot of hate, then that also probably is what comes back to you. And, and it sounds crazy, but it's, it is. And this is where all the religions agree on all of this is karma, right? And, and it's why it's dangerous today. A lot of the philosophies we have and the groups that you have, even when you get down to politics, a lot of it's hate-based. A lot of these groups are hate. They don't call themselves hate-based, but it's always attacking somebody else. And I kind of think that everybody's perfect. I think everybody is perfect um, except me. I think everybody out there is exactly who they're supposed to be except me. If I spend my time in my mirror trying to make myself better tomorrow than I was today.
And but y'all are perfect. That sound crazy. <laughs> so Mandy, any last words? Then I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I gotta run. I got uh, I got time to pick. No. I, can't, I can't talk energy and power and people all day. I gotta get my cotton bag, go pick some cotton. I gotta make some money. <laughs> Any last words for us before you come on? So this was good. This was about culture and crystals and the different cultures that use crystals, what they're used for, kind of an introduction. We'll do a couple more down the road as Mandy has more for us and questions come about. But any last yeah. words you want to close folks out on? Uh, no, I just hope everyone has a good day and thanks for tuning in. If you have any specific questions, feel free to reach out to their me or Ken. And yeah, I'd love to be back to talk a whole lot more about crystals awesome thank you so much yeah. mandy you yeah thank you ken have a wonderful day everybody else you have too. a wonderful day sorry about the earlier mistake I'll upload yeah the video. sorry about that <laughs> yeah it happens that's just how things and my connection happen. isn't that great yeah well that's okay you were here just enough we had a great time we'll we'll continue more of it you guys Sounds have a good, good day all right see you everyone bye uh, bye ken